All right, here we go. All right, once again, welcome to our Ignite Catalyst event. I'm going to just take a little minute and talk about uh, SBR Ignite, what it is, why it's different. But uh, just wanted to give another hand to Rafferty really quick. The last session was a great, great kickoff. Uh, so uh, a lot of you that are here, how many of you, gives me an idea who's in the room, how many of you have heard of SBR program? All right, so that's like everybody. How many of you particularly have heard about SBR Ignite before this? Okay, how many of you are investors? Had a few investors in the room. How many of you are small businesses or small business owners? All right. How many of you, let me see, who am I missing? Investors, small business. Oh, large primes. How many large primes are in the room? Okay, so I, I, <laughs> I asked those questions because everybody can kind of benefit from the community that we have with uh, SBR Ignite. Uh, just hop into it here. Got to extend closer to the computer from my point of the work. Maybe you could just click it for me. One more chart. All right, so why does NASA want to invest in small business? That's the first question we get with SBR Ignite. So NASA has several goals. Everyone is familiar with, you know, NASA's goals of expanding human knowledge for the scientific discovery. Everybody knows that we want to expand our presence on the moon and Mars. That's Artemis. You know, we're studying and we're we're validating technologies on the moon with intentions of going to Mars. But a lot of people don't think about the fact that NASA has a goal to catalyze economic growth and address national challenges. Uh, you, you hear so many people say, like, why are we going to the moon? Why are we doing this? And NASA actually has a goal to specifically address that. And in my opinion, the Ignite program is one of the most significant or substantial ways of stimulating this economy. We do this, you know, I kind of alluded to this in my presentation because when NASA invests in firms, we call that to be, we, we hope that to be catalytic. We want to stimulate the commercial space and aerospace industries. We want other investors to invest in these firms. If those firms have an interest in a private sector investment, we as NASA, we want to de-risk these firms, meaning that, you know, after NASA, after the firm develops technology for NASA, we kind of de-risk them as other projects and programs at NASA that we want these uh, technologies and these firms to be infused into. In addition to the fact that we want these firms to get private, private sector, private investment and sales, right? As a result of that, uh, like I alluded to in my introduction, we have more firms to choose from for technologies. We don't just have these big companies developing technology. So technology gets cheaper for everybody. So if NASA is purchasing technology or looking to uh, procure certain research and development services by having more partners to choose from, the technology gets cheaper. In addition to the fact that it's even more uh, impactful. So I developed instrumentation for a number of years. Some of you have heard me on the AMAs, but I'm a microwave engineer. So I developed uh, technologies that use microwave instrumentation to take remote measurements. Uh, under, uh, in graduate school, it was to, to measure core body temperature, right? Uh, for NASA, I was developing these technologies to measure different artifacts of the Earth, so biomass, snow water equivalent. But if I was an entrepreneur and I wanted to take my radiometers per se, and sell them to see someone, I wouldn't have a large commercial market, right? Like who would buy this radiometer that I use to measure snow or measure biomass or these types of things. So what we've done with SBR Ignite, we've actually uh, kind of selected and hand chosen our topics based on these topics having a commercial space or aerospace market. Uh, even as we go through these catalyst events, the, the way we did it last year, the topics uh, kind of go through the catalyst events and some of the topics end up in the actual solicitation, which is around August. Some of them do not end up in the solicitation, but we refine the topics based on the intel that we get from these meetings so that when, when you all ask small businesses propose, we know that there's a commercial space or aerospace market. We also choose our firms partly from the fact that they can actually commercialize the technology and sustain themselves after SBR Ignite. So those are some of the things that's different about SBR Ignite. And so when you look at uh, why we do this, our broader impact, what type of firms are we looking for? We were, we're looking for firms that's more commercialization focused. I talked about developing the radiometers and having other, other customers. There are other applications of your technology that you may not have explored. 
And so we're looking for firms that have done the customer's discovery. They've done the market research. They've looked and found what are some of the other applications of my technology that I might not have considered. Uh, I don't know if you all realize this, but Uber was not what it is what it is now when it started. Uber was first a commercial limousine service and the commercial limousine service, they 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 went to uh, investors saying, hey, can you invest in this? And the investors was like, hey, we want we feel like it could be better in a ride share type uh, business model. Totally changed the game of Uber. Uber changed the complete game of ride share and taxing, right? And so these are the types of things that we're looking for. Did the firms do this type of type of homework? We're looking for this commercial viability uh, similar similar to what I mean by is, are there other applications of the technology basically in the commercial space or aerospace market? Have you looked for other co customers in the commercial space or aerospace market? In addition, what we've done uh, with Ignite I always give this disclaimer because the solicitation in and out is certain legal legalities and formalities that we have to follow. But uh, I will say that the, the PY23 solicitation is not going to be too different from PY22. It's going to be different, but not too different. But in PY22, we streamline the application process. So we asked for a seven page uh, white paper and a 15 page chart deck. So that's what we kind of did for firms to kind of separate SBR Ignite from the mainline solicitation. Uh, you're still eligible for the three phases of funding. I'll talk about that. Uh, there, uh, I always like to kind of give this story. Can you go back one? I don't know why. Yeah, all right, thanks, it works. So I always like to kind of give the story about SBR Ignite, <clears throat> kind of similar to my story of, of when I first kind of came to NASA. Uh, I was an intern and I applied for this fellowship. I didn't get the fellowship, but, but, but when I didn't get it, they said, Hey, but we're still going to give you an internship. And I, I put the phone down and I hollered because I knew if I could just get my foot in the door with NASA, you know, it'll be my dream to work with them. And so I always like to tell firms this engagement piece is really one of the biggest aspects of uh, SBR Ignite or one of the ways that you kind of take advantage of the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> what I mean by that is I was an intern first year. Uh, I think at the end of that internship, I was able to meet the center director. I was on the San Francisco news, all these different things happened. I, I worked at, uh, at NASA Ames and I worked really hard because I wanted to make a, a good impression. And so I, I tell firms that we're going to talk about the money on the next chart, but I tell firms that one of the best ways to benefit from SBR Ignite is to participate in these meetings, but also if you're awarded, engage with your core. You're usually assigned a core or a tech monitor if you're selected. Engage with that core, ask that core, are there other projects and programs that can use my technology, do some Google searching, find other people's inside of the agency, outside of the agency that might could potentially use your technology. Your core may potentially connect you with them. Usually the cores that the tech monitors are very, very helpful. They know that for, it's very hard for small businesses. So they also would be willing to help you find others within the agency that could potentially use your technology. So, so that engagement piece is really important and one of the main benefits, in my opinion, of the Inspire Ignite program. Uh, I talked about the sort of proposal. Uh, people always ask us, you know, why don't you do like a straight to phase two, right? Why don't you do that? We we do not have kind of the funding to do it, but with SBR Ignite, the phase two proposal is due 120 days within the phase one. And similar to the mainline solicitation, if we want to talk about the, the money, you get 150K at phase one. That's how much you get similar to uh, the mainline SBR solicitation. At phase two, you get 850K. Uh, one another thing that's different when we talk about an accelerated schedule and accelerated uh, pace of Ignite, we've shortened the phase to, well, we haven't really shortened the period of performance. We advertise, we recommend a shortened period of performance. So for all of the SBR solicitations, you can propose a shorter period of performance, but Ignite, we really kind of encourage you to do a shorter period of performance. The phase two period of performance is 24 months. Phase one period of performance is six months. Again, the phase two is due 120 days within the phase one. What that does is helps you to accelerate your technology development. You don't have any breaks. So if you're awarded a phase two while your phase one is still going on, you don't need to kind of stop technology development. We know small businesses have different contracts and you're working on different things. So we don't want you to have to kind of stop 
working on that. We want to accelerate everything. We've also heard that that is also good for investors. So we've heard that investors also like the fact that if you have that kind of accelerated technology schedule from the phase one into the phase two, they're more willing to kind of give up some or provide a little bit more investment because they see you working towards these commercial customers. So those are some of the things that we've done differently for Ignite. Now, to be clear, we're not asking you to just shorten your phase two period of performance for sake of shortening your pace to phase two period of performance. We want you to do what's reasonable. And we're going to, when we evaluate your proposals, we look at several different things, scientific and technical merit. We look at commercialization potential, which for Ignite, commercialization potential is just as important as scientific and technical merit. We also look at your work plan and we look at your experience and qualifications. So we look at all of those different factors for SBR Ignite. And we look at kind of the big picture. Does the work plan and the timeline line up with what they're doing? So you don't have to propose a short, shorter period of performance if whatever you're developing takes 24 months and it's reasonable within those 24 months. We want you all to propose whatever makes sense for you because we want you all to be successful. So <clears throat> that's the accelerated schedule. Well, we talked about the phase one and phase two. Now let's get into uh, the budget. I show this chart because uh, the commercial space industry is big and this data is just from, from 2020, right? Uh, and so NASA's budget, only 24 billion. So that's, that's uh, you know, very small, right? NASA's 24 billion of this non-government space budget. Uh, that's about the, the cost of an airline carrier. So we have to be really creative about what we do and how we do it, and especially in space and in space commercialization. And that's some of, some of the things that we're kind of experimenting with, with Ignite, is how do we kind of stimulate that commercial space and the commercial space and economy. So here's some data on what we're looking for in SBR Ignite. We're not excluding everybody, but we're looking for new to NASA and new to SBR companies. That's hard to do in this day and age because we know that, you know, a lot of you kind of small businesses, you do your homework, you work really hard. And so, so it's kind of hard to find new to NASA, new to SBR companies, but we've heard as an agency that we keep funding the same companies over and over again. And we've heard that, hey, you know, from firms, I see a company that's developing similar technology to what I'm developing. Why wouldn't I select it? So Ignite, we said, how can we be more intentional to get new firms into our pipeline? Uh, I talked about our solicitation being left less prescriptive. Again, I can't say what's going to be in the PY23 solicitation, but it's not going to be too different from PY22, but the seven page chart deck, 15 page white paper. That's this uh, chart here. We talked about accelerating the pace of innovation. This actually should be a million from your phase one to phase two. And I like to talk about this because we want to work with more diverse partners. I talked about how growing up, we didn't, I didn't know any scientists and engineers. I remember um, around the sixth grade, you know, in the neighborhood where I'm from, a lot of my friends had joined the gang. And the, the YMCA kind of down the street had an electronics class. And I loved kind of going to that electronics class, learning about resistors, uh, transistors, capacitors. A lot of small businesses that I meet in this, in this space kind of have that same vision of not only do they want to develop space technology, they want to kind of help their community. They want to do other programs. They want kids to learn about space. So we want to work with more diverse partners, obviously African-Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, Native Americans. We're also looking at geographic diversity. We're looking at states that don't have as many SBR, STTR awards. How can we get more interest in those states? Uh, but I don't know if any of you here are from Hawaii or Alaska, but when we started putting together the Ignite Catalyst events, uh, Ellen was saying, hey, how can we get more people from Hawaii and Alaska? And we did specialized outreach to those states that are what we call, quote unquote, underserved to try to see, are there any deep tech research and development founders, entrepreneurs that we could bring into our community uh, for SBR Ignite? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I talked about most of this. Uh, one of the last things that I kind of want to get into before we take uh, questions and answers is that what's the benefit to you as a firm? You know, most of you all probably know what the benefits are, but early stage R&D funding, that's non-diluted. We don't take any equity from your company with SBR, all right? So that's one of the things. Up to $1.15 $1 million 
in funding. I talked about the phase one being 150K, talked about the phase two being 850K, but we also have our post phase two programs. Post phase two programs are the phase two E, which we provide matching funds up to 375K. I think I have a chart on that. Uh, we don't take any equity. I kind of alluded to the experience of working with NASA scientists and engineers, but I'll, I'll share different scenarios. So with SBR, we've had firms, for example, the snow instrument that I developed, we, it was, it's called either Wisdom or Sweet Saw. We did two iterations. We had a SBIR technology on that instrument. It was the antenna. So I developed the sensor uh, and, and my team developed the, the complete system. But every time we upgraded that antenna, we, it was, because it was an SBR company, we did what we call a phase three. Uh, NASA programs or any federal agency can do a phase three on your phase one. So you don't even need to have a phase two to do a phase three, but that project or program funds that phase three. So my program, let's say it was WISM, Wideband Instrument for Snow Measurement, it funded the phase three every time we upgraded the snow instrument. The first time we went and flew the instrument, we did it at two frequencies. The second time, three. And the third time, I think we did four frequencies. Every time we needed to upgrade that antenna, and it was an SBIR technology. And so uh, the, the opportunity to work with NASA scientists and engineers, you may have a component in a system. Uh, I'm going to talk to a lot of my NASA scientists and engineers about, it's about 10 or 12 uh, SBR companies that have developed technologies for the NASA rover. And so that's one path where, you know, you're working with NASA and they, they may need you to develop something really niche for them. There are also situations and scenarios that I heard it was kind of like a parallel path. So uh, uh, I might have. <laughs> so NASA was developing technology for a particular application. Can't really talk about the application in this case, but they also wanted someone else to see, you know, if we if we take this path to development and a small business took another path, which path would be best? That's another scenario of working with NASA scientists and engineers. And the outcome of that was they learned things from both, both technology paths. The small business was doing it a little bit different way than NASA, but they learned things from it. And essentially NASA was able to take the intel that the small business developed and kind of put things together and help their technology development, what they were working on. Uh, the, the network of diverse entrepreneurs, we're creating these networks and alliances here at the Catalyst events. Uh, at the last event back in San Diego, it was around hybrid electric aircraft. And what we noticed is that a lot of firms were kind of building alliances within themselves within that meeting. And we're looking for you all to kind of do some of those same things here. Uh, other, I talked about getting your foot in the door with other NASA projects and programs. That's huge. Uh, uh, you know, I, I gave that example of the internship, but that internship led to me meeting other people at NASA. I got other internships and, and the story is kind of, I'm here in front of you today. Uh, I talked about de-risking the technology. It also builds your reputation. So by you working with NASA as being an SBR firm or working with us in any way, it kind of builds your reputation as a company. You know, other people will kind of want to work with you because you have kind of develop technology for NASA. And this is this chart I wanted to kind of give you an oversight of kind of our phase one and phase two and phase three programs that I talked about. Again, phase three is non-SBR funded, meaning that, you know, that money doesn't come from SBR. It comes from a, a project or program. Uh, spend a little bit more time on the phase three, again, because you only have to have a phase one to do a phase three. And here's the beauty of phase three. If that program is from a different agency, that program can do a phase three on a NASA phase one. It could be for any amount over any timeline. That's the beauty of the phase three. And so for those of you that don't do or haven't done government procurement, when I was developing the snow instrument, there was a situation where uh, the instrument was getting leakage, meaning that it was a radar. I keep, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was a radar. So it had leakage, meaning that once you transmit the signal, we're looking for a return, but leakage was kind of leaking out. So it was kind of distorting our signal. So we needed to procure some boxes to hermetically seal. And we needed these boxes to be custom because we needed this instrument to fit within a certain form factor. However, to get these boxes procured through NASA, you kind of got to pitch, you got to go through like three vendors. You have to do this whole procurement thing that could take months. But with a phase three, 
by me working on the NASA side, on the SBR side, we've done a phase three in as little as a month. We've been able to get that on contract. All right. So that's the beauty of the phase three. And again, it could be from any agency. So uh, I, I showed the NASA budget because I know a lot of space entrepreneurs say, hey, a million dollars, 150K or 850K for the phase one and phase two is not a lot of money. But there's so many other benefits of the program that I recommend people taking advantage of. And that phase three is one of them. Phase 2E, uh, I think uh, for Ignite, it's, I forget what it is, maybe six months or eight months into your phase two. I have to get the exact number. You're eligible for matching funds for the phase 2E. Phase 2E, they match up to 375K. So that matching funds can come from uh, sales as long as the technology is similar or in alignment with what you develop under the phase one or phase two. So for example, I've seen big companies like Panasonic buy so many units from company X for 375K or even for a million. And we matched that three up to 375K. It can, it can come from investment. It can't be investors on your board or investors that, you know, that's already kind of inside or behind the firewall of your company, but that matching funds can come from investment as well. Uh, we've also seen investment from other agencies. So other agencies have been phase two E investors on NASA programs. And we still match that 375K. <clears throat> the sequentials and CCRPP, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on those, but sequentials come out with very specific topics because Ignite is different. It's a possibility that Ignite topics may or may not be related to the sequentials. Uh, but CCRPP, we provide matching funds from 500,000 up to 2.5 million. At least that's what it was last year. The new CCRPP solicitation hasn't been released, but more than likely it will be similar. And so <clears throat> we, we call this uh, success because we want you as small businesses to get past those multiple valleys of depth. And I saw, I show this chart. I did not do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the Rover. Yeah, this one. So all of these, this is, this is not a comprehensive list, but all of these firms have received a SBIR at one point. And they have technology in the Mars rover that is on the moon. So I say to you as firms that you could be here too. We, we want to use this technology. We want to infuse it into our missions, our research, our flight projects. Our program is a little different from like NSF and other programs that may do research and development just for sake of doing research and development. We want to really use the technology and that's why our solicitation is a little bit different. I also talk about commercialization. It's important for us, for you to be successful, to get through these multiple valleys of death. That's why we want you to commercialize your technology. That's why we have something like a Ignite Catalyst event. And so I also speak to my NASA uh, colleagues that's in the room. You know, these firms that's in the room, that's why I said this Ignite thing is something special. These firms that are in the room could fulfill a significant technology gap that you have to my NASA colleagues. These firms could be the firm that provided a specific capability to do something that you didn't really need it to do. Uh, in my experiences of developing technology, technology development is very niche. You know, in order to make technology better than something that, you know, your competitors are developing, you have to have a, a capability that is really strong. You have to ca have a capability that's really niche. And so I say to my NASA, uh, colleagues that's in the room that the firms in this room potentially could do that. And I believe it because I, I, in my experiences of the past Ignite Catalyst event, or even this Catalyst event, the people here are hungry. The firms here are very hungry. You know, they're, they're very interested. They, they want to know what you need. They want to know what your needs are. So I just want to stress that because we didn't do this just because it's a program or a checkbox. We want as far as the NASA scientists and engineers are concerned, we want you to utilize the, the, the companies in this room. And firms, we also want you to kind of get some feedback. And I say to my investors in the room is that these companies that are here, they could be your 2X, your 5X, they could be your 10X or more producing companies. They're hungry. 
you all probably don't realize it, but a lot of these entrepreneurs, some of which are in the room, some of them put their mortgage up to start their business. I know some of them. I've talked to some of them. I'm, I'm not going to tell you story. Some of them, put they put their mortgages up, right? They, they got loans against their houses with their families. They saved up money for years to live their dream and develop technology for space and space exploration. Some of them <clears throat> had a nice cushy job that they left a government job, but they left it. They put it all on the line to develop these technologies. So I say that to these investors that these firms are hungry that come to these events. They invest money that they really don't have to come to these events and network. <clears throat> I give a, a, I remember uh, when I was in grad school, this thing is going crazy. <laughs> Maybe I just give you this. <laughs> uh, maybe go back to the rover chart. But I remember when I was in grad school. You know, th these conferences always bring back memories for me. And uh, I was uh, I was going to this conference. I, I had won my first NASA fellowship. And by the way, my path to working at NASA was not easy. All right. So uh, I, t I tell the story all the time. I had. I still remember them. Thirteen rejection letters from graduate school. Only one graduate school let me, let me in, and that's the graduate school that I got my PhD from. Multiple, I've written multiple proposals. I can't remember how many proposals. I think I was at 12 or 13 before I won my first NASA proposal. As a result of that proposal, I had to come to this conference. I think uh, I was trying to get into candidacy at the time. So for those of you that's working on your PhD, candidacy is a huge hump and you're working hard. It was a requirement for me to come to this conference. I'm going back to firms that are here and the sacrifices that they make, right? So, you know, I go to the conference. I'm going to go through the motions. They're giving me money. You know, once I get past my dissertation, they're going to be funded. It was a NASA GSRP fellowship. And, you know, I'm just, you know, ready for it to be over. And they was like, hey, you should meet this guy called Paul Reset. I was like, okay, I'll meet him. And, you know, I met him. I got his card. And... I uh, designed this antenna to work close to the body and air doesn't work well. I'm thinking I'm ready for my PhD, you know, ready to finish. My advisor was like, nah, you got to design this complete sensor now, right? It just so happens the type of sensor that he wanted me to design was the same thing Paul Reset was working on, was a radiometer. At the time, I was developing antenna technology, thinking that was good enough for my PhD. I don't know why advisors trick us thinking that we can do one thing until we end up to do so much. Anyway, that's another story. So <clears throat> call Paul Reset up. Do an internship with him, internship with him over the summer at NASA Goddard. Make a long story short, um, he ended up being one of the managers in the branch that I worked in once I got hired on at NASA. And he actually gave me leadership over the snow project, tremendously helped my career, right? I mean, it really helped my career because even my boss didn't know that I was the lead. You know, we'll go to performance review time and... Uh, she was, she would say, Quentin, you know, what do you mean you leading this? I was like, look, you go ask everybody on that project who's leading it. I bet they'll tell you who's leading it. She said, well, I didn't appreciate that. The point I'm trying to make is the, the, the sacrifices. You never know where that one preparation will meet opportunity. You never know where it would be. So I say to my NASA scientists and engineers that's in the room, the firms that could develop your gap technologies could be here. I say to investors, they could be in this room. Your 2X, 5X, 10X, they could be in this room. I say to the firms that are here, you know, the investor that you're looking for, you're here uh, from some of our other panelists. All investors are not good investors. <laughs> but the investor that you're looking for could be in this room just because of so many alliances that were built during the last uh, Ignite uh, Catalyst event in San Diego that was so interesting. I, I mean, I just couldn't believe you know, how much synergy happened just organically. So yes, we provide the 150K, the 850K, we provide the matching funds, which are great, but it's the synergy that's created here that I believe that you all will be able to kind of take, take advantage of. And so I think I have one more chart. Hopefully this thing doesn't go crazy on me. Uh, this, you all have access to these charts. So I just kind of wanted to give you all info on the mainline SBR program. Everybody is already plugged in with H4X Labs. We also have a Slack channel. If you're not in our Slack channel, uh, we encourage you to join our Slack channel. You'll have access to these charts. <clears throat> and this is for the mainline solicitation. So I didn't talk a lot about the mainline solicitation, but we have Patty here. She's from 
the main is on our solicitation. She helps with SBR Ignite and uh, regular programs. So myself and Patty, we're very familiar with the mainline solicitation. We'll be here to answer any questions that you have, whether it's Ignite, Patty can help you the time that she's here answer questions about the mainline solicitation. But this is that website. We also have a newsletter for the mainline solicitation that you can kind of follow and keep up with what's going on. And last but not least, uh, this is just, if you're thinking about submitting, whether you submit to NASA's mainline solicitation or you submit to a like Ignite, make sure you get all your registrations up to date. Your SAM.gov, it's other SBA res uh, uh, registrations that you have to take, have to kind of uh, do your UEI and all these things. And if you applied last year, our program was a little bit more manual. We we're working on a new software called ProSAMS that some of you might have been able to, to kind of test out for us, but we're working on it being more kind of automated this year. If you applied last year and it was some pain points, we just kind of wanted to say that. So this concludes my presentation. I just wanted to take a minute and take any questions that you all have. Sure. Yeah, so the, mm -hmm. repeat the question, yeah. So the question was that apparently just this year, it's been some new tax laws release that I'm not aware of, but the audience member mentioned is that all SBR research and development is 100% taxable. And that, instead, it's the, you, you can't write it off instead of it, instead of it, Right, salaries instead of it being tax exempt. And he was saying, is there a way to kind of um, kind of offset that? So I have to look into that. Obviously, we can't give uh, financial advice. So I'm I'm not as familiar with it, but I but I always ask firms, you know, do you have a CPA? Okay, and 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 he's looked at this and he feels, or she's your CPA has looked at this and feel like just a big, big problem. Okay, all right. I'm gonna raise this up to my leadership and 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 get back with you. What's your name? Todd Doherty. All right, I'm gonna try to remember. If not, I, all right. That's great. That's great. All right. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Yes. No, it has not been tested. It has not been through an official process, but we've had some ignite. We've had some catalyst firms go in and test ProSams. So as we were doing Catalyst, I think from March-ish up into June, I think we put an announcement, was it in the Slack channel, Donna? And we, was Slack channel, that uh, when we had got our ProSounds testers? Yeah, one of the AMAs, we did a call and we had certain testers. If you're interested in testing, I'll, I'll ask our team if, uh, if we have any more slides. Yes, sir. Okay, so this question was, if you're doing a phase three, does the phase three have to be related to your phase one or your phase two, right? And yes, it has to be related. And so for any agency, but even if you're, if you're doing a phase three at let's say DOD and you're doing it, you know, from a NASA phase one, you could do it across agency, but, but your phase three has to be related. It's similar technology development, it has to be some type of relation. The, 
the question is, if a subsystem came out of that technology, would it be eligible for the phase three? Yes. If, if a subsystem, if you didn't, I think the question is, if you didn't originally propose something and one of the subsystems came out of the funding in the NASA phase one, will it be eligible? And the answer to that is yes. You just put that in your phase three application. You know, this was funded. You know, this was funded under the NASA. It came out of technology funded during the NASA at phase one or phase two. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got it. The question is, does the firm have to be U.S. owned and operated to be eligible for SBR Ignite? And the answer to that is yes. So for all of uh, NASA SBR programs, whether mainline solicitation or SBR Ignite, the firm has to be owned and operated in the United States. We do get that question a lot, but if you look at it from the United States perspective, we, uh, our government puts a lot of money into the program. You know, our taxpayers and our tax dollars, that's why we're funded, how we're funded at NASA. We are civil servants. And so because of that, I think that they're looking for investment back into U.S. small businesses. In addition to the fact that, you know, we want homegrown, you know, deep tech research and development technology, but that's a good question. Yes, sir. He said, so when can Canada join the United States? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he said, once Texas leaves, that's what. <laughs> I don't know how we how are we doing on time. Are we about out of time? Yeah, no, we still have 10 minutes. We have a couple of questions in the chat. Oh, so great. Can, oh, yeah. So this is hybrid. So we, ha we also have some people that's joining virtually. And let's take some of those questions. Yeah. So this is a question from Carlito. He says there have been different answers as to where we need to be TRL wise. Dr. Bonds, can you or anyone here elaborate more as to what you're looking for in the Cyber Ignite solicitation? Yeah, I love questions. This is a great question. We get, I get this question all the time. The question is, there have been different, there has been different messaging about where does the TRL level need to be for the technology, right? Does it need, can it be really low? Can it be really high? My answer is we, as SBR Ignite, we accept all tech, all TRL levels. So to give you a little history, SBR Ignite falls up under the early stage innovation programs. Another early stage innovation program is NIAC. So uh, one of the things that came out of NIAC was the Mars helicopter. So if you heard, you ever heard of the Mars helicopter, NASA didn't think about that. That came from a business. I bring that up because we know that businesses, especially small businesses, sometimes have to start off at a lower TRL. So we, we will accept, review, and, and strongly consider any technology at any TRL level. I'm assuming uh, Carlito is talking about at the phase one. At phase two, obviously, we expect you to mature your technology past a certain TRL level. However, the question is really tricky, and let me explain why. So if I go back to microwave instruments, for example, let, let's say I'm a... Uh, topic manager, and I want microwave instruments for biomedical applications, right? Just hypothetically, let's say that. And let's say in my solicitation, I call out very specifically what I'm looking for. I needed to measure from deep within the body. I wanted to measure heart rate, blood rate. I wanted to do all these different things, right? And let's say your, your, your proposal, let's say you're lower TRL, and I have another proposal with higher TRL. If your lower TRL proposal answers the questions in my solicitation better than the higher TRL technology, as a topic manager, I'm going to take the technology that answers that question. But there could be a situation where your higher TRL technology gets me to where I need to be faster. And so you, you, you have to realize that even though you're writing the proposal, you're also competing with other applicants per se. And so that's why that question is kind of tricky in a sense that we accept lower TRL technology, but I think the real thing you should make sure you can do is be very responsive to what's asked for in that solicitation. We're just going to get a few more questions from the chat. Thank you for that. Um, another one, oh, talking about TRL again, so that was the same question. Um, there's one more question um, saying, thank you, Quentin, for a great intro. You've mentioned diversity, including geography, but held both Catalyst events in California and keep mentioning to talk those talk to those in the room. How are startups outside California able to engage at a similar level, events in Texas, DC, NYC, Chicago, or Detroit? 
Okay, so the, the question, okay, I guess they, you all heard the question because they're, they're online, but, you know, we keep doing Catalyst events in California. We're trying to get more geographic diversity. You know, how do we do that? So a little behind the scenes information, as early as this week, we're trying to plan all the way till next year so that we can be in more of these diverse states. Okay, so we understand that to be a problem. Sometimes we kind of have to work with, within the means that we have. We kind of want to make it more convenient for these first few events to get as many people in the room as possible. I kind of alluded to the fact that it was a lot of alliances built last year at the Ignite, uh, not last year, but uh, two weeks ago. And I asked you all to kind of take advantage of that uh, in the room and, and the, in a lot of states that don't have as many awards, it's hard for them to take advantage of, but we wanted to do it in a place that we can get a lot of people together so that these alliances can be built. So that's kind of the reasons why we're doing it that way now. We're hoping that in the future we can have it in more states that are geographically diverse. I'm going to take one from the, um, the, the crowd here on site and then I'll come back to you. Is that okay? I also just wanted to add a little bit sure. to your oh, yeah. response as well. Um, so we are also continuing to do company coaching webinars in addition um, to help support NASA Cyber Ignite. So all of these are virtual online Zoom events. That's another way for you to- Yeah, Donna to makes a great point. Yeah. So, the so look on our website. We have you know a schedule of company coaching events and we make them virtual so that everybody can participate. I think we've done on the order of eight events uh, virtual and uh, some of those have been specifically coaching events so that firms that are not in these states that can show up can participate. Sounds great. Thanks, Quentin. All uh, right, you're welcome. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love these questions, right? They're Always hard questions, and these are the type of questions that can get me in trouble, all right? <laughs> but, uh, so if you look at our solicitation, what we judge from is clear. Uh, scientific and technical merit, uh, commercialization potential, experience and qualifications, and uh, work plan, right? So if you look at, I always have to do this legal disclaimer. If you look at the PY22, just look at it. More than likely, it's not gonna change too much in PY23. And I always like to give tips because, you know, people, you all kind of invest your money, right? And, and this always just reminds me of so many things. I remember that first NASA award that I, that I won. Remember, I had, you know, I had wrote tons of proposals because in graduate school, my grades wasn't the best. So I had to get through graduate school writing proposals. And that's that my, my advisor funded me one semester because I didn't want to write any more proposals. I wanted to focus on my dissertation, but I wrote written NSF, triple AS. DOD. I mean, all these different proposals got rejected. The first NASA one that I won, uh, it was, and some of y'all heard this story, just, just bear with me, but I was like, man, how can I be successful? And somebody said, let somebody else review it, right? So I let one of my colleagues re review it for grammar and spelling. And to this day, I still have a problem with that, okay? Uh, just being honest and transparent, I got fussed that last week about it, okay? Uh, let another one of my colleagues uh, let my advisor review it for technical, but it was this guy named Shaker Banzali in the, in the engineering department. We used to call him Shake Daddy because we used to come to him for everything. So I let Shake Daddy look at my proposal. True story. Shake Daddy, man, I, I'm, I'm not winning. What can I do? Shake Daddy said, what are, the, what are the proposal requirements? Shake Daddy said, let every section be whatever the criteria is, right? My success rate jumped to 40%. Everything I wrote, uh, everything I wrote, 40% I won, you know, and changed when I got to NASA, you know, that percentage went back down. But, that, <laughs> but I still had to write proposals as an engineer. If you, at NASA, if you want to work on what you want to work on, you have to write proposals or you have to do what everybody else say, right? Uh, so that's the first bit of advice that I give you is that whatever those requirements are, and again, not mandatory. This can get me in trouble. I'm not saying this is how you win, but this is what I would do. Okay. Another thing that I see uh, firms making a mistake of on these proposals is not talking about the risks. Okay. Some people think for whatever reason, people got this uh, misconception that we don't do the work at NASA. All right. That instrument that Paul Reset made me lead on, I drew the block diagram on the board. When we flew it, we flew it on the aircraft first. When we flew it on the aircraft. I was on the aircraft operating the instrument. 
I processed the data. And when it wasn't working, I had to go to the hanger by myself and fix it. I still have the connector in my book bag because we saved, we saved the whole experiment. But my point is, we know the technology is we don't it's not just you know the, the subject matter experts some of them are pretty high up and they're a little detached from the technology but most of them work in this area and we know the ins and outs of it so you can't kind of get by without talking about the risks more than likely we know that if you're developing a technology it's really niche meaning that not too many people can do it you have to talk about you know, what are some of the challenges, but we're looking to fund high risk in SBR Ignite and within the main line solicitation. So that's the, the best advice. I hope uh, that kind of answers your question about some tips of how to be successful. Another tip I, I would give, um, and again, this is not mandatory. You really have to, to get with some people. And when I say some people, you know, talk to others that's in commercialization and business, but consider making alliances to uh, apply. Right. And, and and again, if you look at that solicitation, like if, if I started a business and I looked at that solicitation as a business owner, I'm, I'm going to apply for everything because I remember how I felt when I was in grad school. I didn't have any money. Right. So I applied for everything. OK. And sometimes I knew that it was a long shot. I knew that my technology wasn't really the best fit for that particular solicitation, but I'm going to at least try and get some feedback. So that's one thing. Get the feedback, see what it is. But why not make an alliance with another firm and you all apply jointly? Again, you just want to get your foot in the door, kind of like what I was telling you. That's why I gave you all these stories about NASA Ames, because once I got my foot in the door, I networked like crazy. You know, I tried to understand the NASA mission. What are the different mission directors? What, what publications come out that help me understand the decadal surveys? Those are the publications that come out to help me understand what's NASA's vision. What are they working on, right? And so if you make an alliance, my point is the money, yes, you may have to split the money up, but you're kind of behind the door, right? Your, your foot is in the door and get in there and, and just hustle and network you know, and work hard. You know, I gave those examples of firms, you know, putting up their, you know, their mortgages and all these different things because they're hungry. And once they get those types of firms, once they get their foot in the door, they're, they're going to figure something out. So those are the tips I give. It was another question somewhere. Yes. Another another awesome question that can get me in trouble, right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> is the, the question from the audience is is the is the focus on commercial potential, or is the fo focus on transition to other agencies, or is the focus on transition into NASA's SBR STTR program? That's the I think that's the question, right? So it's it's kind of all three, right? In general, just from a basic standpoint, if you look at it just from a basic standpoint, uh, if we give an investment, we want a return on the investment. People think that NASA doesn't want any, a return on investment. But if you look at it from a broader, uh, you know, national sense, our nation funds SBR technology. So our return on investment is you being successful as a firm. Na the, the, nation, the, the Congress gives us as SBR, firm, SBR agencies around the nation, you know, Congress gives us direction. So a return on investment for Congress would be you to be successful, you to be able to get through these valleys of death. Therefore, if you're infused back into a NASA mission or program, it's a win. For, for me as SBAR Ignite, however you sustain yourself, I would like to see you sustain yourself through more contracts, more purchase orders. T to me, that's a win. I would like to be able to say, hey, we gave this firm 150K at phase one, and they got this many purchase orders, they got this many contracts, uh, they they wanted investment, so they got private sector investment. It's even a win if, if I funded them at phase one or we funded them at phase one and they was able to get infusion into a DOD project or program. So however you all can sustain yourselves after us, that's a return on investment, which is the reason why I brought up the, the more jobs, the more programs for kids, to, to more sci diverse scientists and engineers for kids that don't grow up seeing those types of scientists and engineers in their neighborhoods. I think we're about out of time, we, right? We are at time, but I do want to end on one last question from okay. the chat. So someone asked, uh, what's a Techstar solicitation? Is that equal to Ignite Cyber? Maybe. So I just wanted to Yeah. So someone asked, what's a Techstar solicitation? And <laughs> I don't know if I can get my Techstar person to answer that. <laughs> Uh, 
I think they're just asking what's tech stars. It, I, I'll just say. So tech stars is an accelerator program. We want a space tech accelerator program that's sponsored by Jet Propulsion Laboratory, um, as well as the U S space force. Um, we are still taking applications. Now people need to apply ASAP. Um, as a matter of fact, our space force rep is, uh, here in the room also. Um, and, um, yeah, it, it is a 13, it is a 13 week accelerator program. Uh, applications will be due now, now, now. I'm probably going to regret this, but it's okay. You can email me immediately. Sherman at academyinvestor.com. Sherman at academyinvestor.com. Um, yes, exactly. Um, you guys, you can email me immediately for that. Um, so it's, it's run out of, it's run here in LA. It's going to be a hybrid program. There's going to be a stint in uh, LA, a JPL. There's going to be a stint in Colorado. Um, and there's also going to be a stint in DC. Uh, so that is the Techstar Space Technology Program. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Sherman. And just to clarify, and we did not plan that. <laughs> yes, we did not. We did not plan that. Yes. And just to clarify, that is separate from the NASA Cyber Yeah, Ignite. to be clear, it's totally separate from totally SBR separate. Ignite. Yeah. I mean, we work together, right? We want, again, back to this young lady's question, we want infusion from all programs. We want uh, tech stars, uh, companies to come, any accelerator company that's space related, apply to NASA. NASA you know, uh, firms to apply to these other accelerators. So we, we want this, again, we're building a, a community. So I, anyway, we're, we're out of time. I've been running my mouth. Thank you all so much. One, one more question. Can I take one more? I got to be quick. <laughs> he said, one shake that his phone number. <laughs> all right. Anyway, <laughs> thank, thank you all so much. <laughs> thank you.